Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. We have 3 to the power x equals 2x plus 1, and we're going to be solving for x. Now, I call this equation non-standard because we have an exponential on the left and a linear function on the right. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation first. I'm pretty sure at this point you guessed and found a solution, right? Okay, but hold on to it because we're, we're going to be using a very special function to approach this problem and then later on I'm planning to generalize this, okay? Cool. In another video, of course. So we have this equation and probably you can just guess and check some values, but let's go ahead and manipulate this equation so that we can find the solutions in a more algebraic way, okay? All right, ready? So here's what we're going to do first. I want to use substitution here, obviously, to make things a little easier. You don't have to. You could also proceed a little, little differently, but I'm going to go ahead and call this whole thing y, and don't ask why. From here, we get the following. 2x plus 1 equals y, which implies x equals y minus 1 over 2. If you solve for x from this equation, these are also called literal equations, kind of like you're solving a formula for one of the variables. So... Now, we can go ahead and plug that in here on the left, and that gives us 3 to the power y minus 1 over 2 equals y. Now, y, not the letter, y is this equation better than the original one. Because on the right-hand side, we have the y by itself, which is a good advantage. Obviously, there's other ways to do this, but let's proceed with this one. Now, the next thing I want to do is split up some stuff on the left hand side so that I can put the 3 to the y and y together and then I'll use my special function okay now let's go ahead and do this let's write this as 3 to the power y over 2 minus 1 half and then this implies that we're doing division right when exponents are subtracted that indicates division so I can write it like this and then I want to go ahead and multiply both sides by 3 to the power negative y over 2. So if you multiply this by 3 to the power negative y over 2, it's going to be good. And if you multiply here, these two terms, actually the exponents are going to add to 0. In other words, this is going to be 1 because 3 to the power 0 is 1. And we're going to end up with 1 over 3 to the power 1 half, which is actually 1 over square root of 3, right? So this is equal to 1 over square root of 3. So let me go ahead and write this on the left. y times 3 to the power negative y over 2. And the, the left-hand side on the right, which is 1 over square root of 3. So far, so good? Okay. We haven't used our special function yet because we have to prep it first. Here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to use the fact that 3 equals e to the power ln 3 and replace this 3 with that. And that's going to give me y times e to the power ln 3 to the power negative y over 2 equals 1 over root 3. Great. Now let's go to multiply the exponents here and we can kind of write it as y times e to the power negative y over 2 times ln 3. It's better to write the fraction first. It just looks better. And on the right hand side... I'm just going to write it for um, as 1 over root 3 for now. Or I could probably turn this into root 3 over 3. How about that? By multiplying by the conjugates, we're able to get that. Okay? Cool. Now, this is what I have so far. Do you know what I'm getting at? Yes. If you said Lambert's W function, you got it. Now, what I need is t e to the t. Okay? Some people call this fish, but I call it t. Anyways, so these two things have to be the same. When they are and you apply Lambert's W function, it just gives you or spits out the T. Okay, cool. So how do I put that in that form? We're pretty close because look, this is our T. And this should be turned into T. Okay. So how do you do that? Multiply by negative one half ln 3. Makes sense? Or multiply by negative ln 3 over 2. That's what I need, right? So when I do multiply both sides by that, I get negative y over 2 times ln 3 times e to the power negative y over 2 
times ln3. Now we got our t's, right? Okay, this is my t and that's my t. And I'm going to go ahead and mul uh, apply the Lambert W function. But let's go ahead and multiply root 3 over 3 by the same thing, which is negative ln 3 over 2. And that gives us negative root 3 ln 3 over 6. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, when you apply Lambert's W function on both sides, here and here, you're going to get the following. You're going to get the t from here because it's going to spit out the t which is negative y over 2 times ln 3. And on the right-hand side, you're going to get Lambert something, right? Okay, great. Now, you can go ahead and do a little bit of work on the right-hand side as well. But let me just tell you something which is going to be helpful in a little bit when I show you the graph. So hold on to this. This is approximately negative 0 0.317. Okay, I calculated for you. But later on, when you look at the graphs, please consider this value. Now, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take this value, algebraically, the exact value, and manipulate this a little bit to turn it into Wable, okay? So that we can apply Lambert's W function. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and write it as, but of course, I need, I'm going to multiply by root 3, which is going to bring a root 3 because that's what I need. And this is going to give me root 3 times root 3 is going to be a 3, obviously, so this is going to be negative 3 ln 3 over 6 root 3. What am I going to do next? I'm going to split up some stuff. Uh, first uh, thing I'm going to do is split up the 6 into 3 times 2 like this. Notice 3 times 2 is going to give you 6, so it's the same thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, separate a 1 over 3 root 3. And then the rest, if I separate this, is going to give me negative 3 over 2 from here, right, times ln 3. We did a lot of separation, and you might be thinking, like, why on earth are we doing all these things? You'll see in a little bit. Now, this is 3 times 3 to the power 1 half, right? And that is equivalent to 3 to the power 3 halves. But when you reciprocate it or flip it over, it just becomes 3 to the power negative 3 halves. Do you see what I'm getting at now? And we have a negative 3 over 2 here. And we're going to put it back here. And that's going to become ln 3 to the power negative 3 over 2. Well, we call this mathematics or mathemagic or just hocus pocus, right? But that's what it is. Now, take a look because we're about to change this a little bit more. Now, 3, remember, is e to the power ln 3. So when you replace e, 3 with that, you're going to get negative 3 over 2 times ln 3 because the exponents will be multiplied. Remember that. And then we're going to get this ln 3 to the power negative 3 halves. Wow. All I have to do now is just bring this guy down here. And then I got what I needed. And this is going to become negative 3 halves times ln 3 times e to the power negative 3 halves times ln 3. See? This is another t times e to the t, or you can call this c e to the c, right? And hopefully you see what I see. And if you w this c e to the c, you're going to get c, which is negative 3 halves ln 3. Hold on to that because we're going to go ahead and plug it in. Where? Here. Remember, we left off with this one and we were trying to w this one and we were able to do that finally and now we have negative y over 2 ln 3 equals negative 3 over 2 ln 3 how nice right it's pretty convenient but a lot of struggle with algebra ln 3 cancels out 2 cancels out the negative cancels out y equals 3 and you're like why well that's the result of Lambert's w function but wait a minute y equals 3 means what y is 2x plus 1 if 2x plus 1 is equal to 3, that implies x equals 1. So is that a solution? Yes. But there are two solutions. How do I know that? Let's go ahead and take a look at some stuff. First of all, this is the graph of Lambert's W function. By the way, this is how you can graph it in Desmos. You graph x equals y e to the y, which is the inverse of y equals x e to the x, obviously. And kind of split it up into two pieces at y equals negative 1 because that's where the function uh, is 
divided into two branches, whatever you want to call that. But that's our particular x value. I disabled it because I didn't want it didn't look good. But you're going to see it on the next page because I zoomed in and yay, our vertical line intersects this graph at two points, which means we're supposed to have two solutions. Does that look familiar? OK, great. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at another graph and you're going to realize, uh oh, there are two solutions, x equals 0 and x equals 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Keep up the good work. And bye-bye.